Hello, everybody. Welcome to my office. It was a fantastic sales weekend. Um, up a ton from last weekend, which was one of my worst ever. Uh, last weekend had under under hundred dollars in sales. I think it was like seventy bucks in sales. This weekend, almost eight hundred dollars in sales. So at the end of the video, as I'm packing stuff up, or uh, at least after I get done pulling stuff, I'll let you know exactly how I did that. Hint not that hard almost exactly what you're supposed to be doing but i don't want to give it away yet uh so first up uh sold is a uh sears tripod um not a great amount of money but it all adds up also this is one of those things where i instead of researching every one i went oh tripods are worth money let me buy every one i see and then some were worth a ton of money, the bigger professional um, videographer tripods. This one, not so much. Sears Aluminum, um, that is $8 plus shipping, but that'll be an easy pack. Now this is a great sale. In one of my previous videos, I talked about um, selling vintage um, cookware, stainless steel, copper bottom, all that kind of stuff. Um, aluminum clad um, if you want to check that out it's a couple videos ago um, if I've ever figured out how to link videos I would link it but <laughs> that escapes me at the moment um, but I set I sold a set a five-piece set uh, took an offer um, I think I listed for 149 took an offer of 119 119.99 I do 99 and everything I know it's sales mini but it's a proven fact making it 99 tricks people's brain into thinking things are cheaper i'm not trying to scam people or something it's just i've worked in sales and other businesses it's just a fact of life that it, it works if that ever changes i'll stop doing it but for now all my prices are dot 99 um now let me double check which shelf this is on because i actually put in a um shelving category system b4 so we have shelf b row four so pretty simple now to get all these pieces out let me see how much work that's gonna be not that bad i don't think actually i do know this sold so i'll go ahead and pull that out right now all right and it is reno wear so keep an eye out for reno wear that's a good one now this is gonna be heavy heavy so a couple trips is what it's gonna take um just like this. They're all basically the same. They had no lids. So that kind of worried me that I might have to sit on them for a while because they didn't have any lids. But um, I think less than two weeks and it sold. You know, I could have held out for the rest of the money. But but for me, sometimes the, the quick flip is better, especially with anything that takes up any amount of, any amount of significant space. Um, after that, another thing I talked about a couple videos ago, um, board games and where there is money in board games let me just put these back real quick um but not really good money unless they're specialty games and they're also very slow sellers unless they're a specialty game so this one i picked up about i'd say a month ago um but it's a monopoly firefighters edition the firefighters edition um any of your tv ones but anything where it's it's a niche game I did try some retail arbitrage on niche Monopoly games, but that I figured for Christmas, so I bought up a few different kinds of Jeff Foxworthy and a couple different. I still have them. It was a bad plan. Actually, it was a good plan, but it was a plan that many other people had. So I'm not one of those people willing to ship something for a 10% return. That's not going to happen. So I'll probably, if I was a less moral human i would probably just go return them to walmart where i got them but that's not my thing so i'll drop the price just to get them off my shelves eventually but for now they'll just sit um they don't take up a lot of space next um listed a bunch of phones the other day so of course when you list a bunch of something it sells this is just a handset at&t cordless handset let me click on the picture just because a lot of them look very much the same uh cordless handset 
it. Okay, so it's got the black button. Let me see if I can ATT code. Oh, bingo. Easy peasy. I'm good at this. And match them up. That is a perfect match. Got that. That sold for $9.99. Free shipping. Not great, but I'll throw that in a padded mailer, and that's a that's a quick five bucks after shipping. Um, next up, we have a vintage General Electric digital alarm clock with the faux wood. Um, let me double check because these all, especially the General Electric, they made so many variations of almost the exact same clock that it's it's very hard to tell the difference. So let me see if find it um, I think I'm looking at it right here so let me sneak my skinny butt in here there are times in life where I wish I was a bigger person so I could you know move or lift something heavy or whatever I may need that for but when it's squeezing in tight spaces I am thankful I am a string mean Let's double check on that. That is a, oh, let's get a part number just to be, I got too many to mistake it. And it is model number 74630A. Tested, got it. All right. Yeah, great, great sales weekend. Um, Sold, you know, some, some smaller, easy to ship items for not a lot of money. That was $11.99 plus shipping on that. Um, but sold some some higher end stuff. That set of pans, a couple more sales in here that are a little higher dollar value. But the combination, you want you want a, a bunch of smalls and lower end stuff and some high end stuff if you need turnover because you're not gonna sell things all the time, especially if you need money coming in constantly. Um, for me, my business model going forward is to attempt to have mostly higher cost items um, because that's not how my life is done. I'm a saver. I always have backup money. So if I have less sales, less packing, less time involved, but each sale has a higher value, that's going to work great for me. Um, another phone, AT&T Trimline corded phone. I know where that's at. I can see it from here. Right there. There was two of these. Um, and that big bulk set of phones um, in the last video, if you want to check that out, um, they were exactly the same. That one was clean. The other one was not. And that was the difference between me listing something that sold for $8.99 free shipping and not listing something. Um, because all I had to do was take a picture of that. I took one picture, listed it, and it's on its way out the door um, a couple days later. The one that had tape goo all over it would have taken me 20 minutes and then therefore not worth my time anymore next up had a little bit of an issue with this sale not really an issue but it's something that comes up every once in a while where someone buys something and then sends you a message uh hey i need you to punch in this address instead of the one that it's bought under 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 um but that actually is a violation of ebay's policies lots of people don't have a problem with that uh, but it's against their policy, I think, to avoid drop shippers. I don't mind drop shippers. Drop shippers buy a lot of uh, high end electronics for me VCRs, DVD players, stuff like that, receivers. Um, but I still am not going to go against eBay's policies because I don't want to be taking on any additional risk. So when they ask me to switch an address, I say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's against eBay's policy. And then I just say, I can cancel the order and you can change the address or you can contact eBay and attempt to change the address, which I don't know if eBay will do that. I think they'll still just have you cancel it. But either way, I'm not going to do it. I think they bought it a second time and then didn't change the address. So I'll double check that before I send it out, pack it up and be like, hey, did you actually change the address? Um, I don't think this is a drop shipper in any way or, or anything hinky, but because uh, it's a vintage coffee pot. Uh, 70s GE coffee pot percolator. And that, bad boy, is easy to find. Nice and shiny right there. And that sold for $29.99 plus shipping. 
Now, that's either got to be going really far or something. Now, it says New York, but that says 20 bucks in shipping, so that can't be right. Or maybe I'll, I'll switch that up and see if they want to go FedEx or something and save them a couple dollars. Usually, people don't get back to me in time when I say, hey, I could send this UPS or FedEx and save you some money, but I'm going to mail it out today. So if you don't answer the message back, sorry, I tried. Uh, and then, again, you list a lot of something, you sell a lot of it. Uh, dark brown Tupperware replacement lid, uh, $12 free shipping, but $12 free shipping for this, I'll take that all day, every day. So Tupperware, also something I did um, two videos ago, if I'm not mistaken. If you want to check that out, my thoughts on what Tupperware sells, what Tupperware is worth selling. Um, and it's not all of it because you'll see further down the list. There's a couple that weren't that great. Uh, this is the one I pulled off the shelf. I said already sold. This is a vintage Townsend fish skinner. Um, I think it's new in box, but it was open and there was tape on it. So I, I put, I didn't do open box. I said used, even though I don't think it has been. Uh, and that was $25, um, free shipping. No, 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 no not for shipping $25 plus shipping I took an offer on that I had listed um three of a four piece set uh Pyrex nesting doll mixing bowls the primary color ones so it's the blue yellow red green and I had been sitting on it for months because I had three of them I'd gotten two together I found a third one I was like okay well I'll come across the green one I don't know why I thought I would. Months later, I hadn't. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll buy the green one. Also a stupid idea, because after shipping, the extra money that green one would have got me is gone. But what I did mention in a previous video about this specific red Pyrex nesting bowl, which is not in fantastic condition. See if that comes across. Um, yeah, that definitely comes across good on the camera there. Scratched up, faded. But what it does have, let me get in the light. What it does have, see, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, you'll see it says Pyrex, but instead of having like a, a bowl number, um, like a whatever, P something or, or a 403, I think is what the other ones would have been, 402, stuff like that. Uh, you'll see it just says uh, TM regular Pyrex u.s patent office this means it's from the 40s this means it's from an original run pyrex so it gives it more value even in this condition and that sold for 34.99 plus shipping that's going all the way to california i'm going to pack that up really well because shipping has gotten better i still have a couple items from december mid-december that haven't made it places I filed for lost packages at this point on those. Shipping is still iffy, especially going across country or going to big metropolitan areas. Uh, shipping still messed up. Also in Michigan specifically, the worst one we had, there was a post office like hub in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's um, Southwest Michigan that had stuff piled wall to wall and they just weren't scanning stuff. So anything that went that way uh, through Grand Rapids, mystery. It's either showing up at their door or I'm filing for a lost package. Something with the other side through like Detroit or Flint or any of the other sides of the state, perfect. It, it ran like normal mail. So it was very, it wasn't USPS across the board. I know they were slammed, but other ones kept up, but there was very specific hubs that really messed up a lot of stuff. But I am still seeing some weird stuff. I was watching Pete at Craigslist Hunter. Uh, he sent something to, I want to say it was going to like Montana or something. Really doesn't matter where it was going. It was going continental U.S., shipped to Puerto Rico, and then was shipping back to the U.S. Figure that out. How could that ever be the d most direct route to get something somewhere? That doesn't make any sense. So if I didn't say it already, $34.99 for that Pyrex bowl. Next up, two vintage silver, how do you say that? Servalier, Servalier bowls. The lids, like the brown ones I just sold, which those brown lids got 
$11.99 free ship. These two lids with the bowls, $5.99 plus shipping. So barely lit worth listing the bowls themselves. But like this, nice containers. And these are good containers. I understand why there's still a market for this. The, the vintage Tupperware, the plastic is extra thick. The seal on them is good forever and it seals good. Uh, you could seal this up with soup in it, drop it off a building. It's gonna be good to go. And that was $5.99 plus shipping. Next up took a, actually it was an offer. I think I sent out an offer on this one. It's a fire pit, fireplace tool stand. I think it's fake brass. It looks brassy, but I just, I didn't know. So I just put metal, um, but it's just the stand, no tools. I got some log scissors hanging on it just cause those are listed and I didn't have a better place for them. Um, yeah, so a stand like that. And I listed a few of them. Another one of those items where I said, oh, these have value. Let me buy every one I could possibly find. Dumb, don't do that. Find the ones with value. List the ones with value, because some of them, you can get a ton of money for them, but it's the the ornate, uh, the, the vintage, not even vintage, the antique, because um, they are a pain in the butt to clean, for one, because they're all charred up. Uh, they're okay to ship, because most of them ha are threaded. Like this will break down, this unscrews, this comes off, this comes off, this part comes off, so... For overall length, it's kind of long, but the rest of this I can fit together, and, and so it'll ship priority not too bad. But that was $16.99 plus $41.71 in shipping. I don't know why that could be, but they're willing to pay it. I'm willing to ship it. Now, that seems insane, okay? That, that seems very high to pay for shipping, but the item's only $17, and they want it. So they're like, okay, $50, bucks, I get the thing I want. They'll probably get a little bit money back. I can probably ship it a lot cheaper than that. All right, because it's such a unique um, packing situation, pack job, I figured I'd hop on. I already disassembled it, but one, the fireplace holder, um, I took, a, took it apart, unscrewed the long, um, the long rod, and you can imagine. Actually, I'll cut it in, you'll see. All right, so I took it apart, wrapped the base, the hanging section and the um, the topper, the screw on topper, pack that up all nicely. And then I wrapped the rod and then it turns out that it, with this one at least, it's going to fit perfectly in a priority shoe box. Then I can put in the rod. I'm gonna bend that edge over. Um, just so that it, it's got some extra protection and it won't poke through the box. I mean, it still could, but I would hope it doesn't. Um, and that's gonna slide right down in. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just to give it some extra protection. Maybe lose a little bit of that height. All right. And then from that point, I'll put in a little bit of packing paper to actually, I'm going to position that on an angle, which will reduce the height, not by a lot, but some. But some is better than none. And then what I will do, bend those in a little bit, grab myself another shoe box, prior to mail shoe box. Now this is one of those items where I think from now on, if I list it, I'm going to box it up so that I can give a little more accurate uh, shipping dimensions and pass those savings on to the customer also pass on my ability to make more money because the less shipping it costs the more they're willing to pay for the item they don't know that but that's how that goes all right so am i going to need this whole box to make that work yes i am i'm going to wiggle that on over take my knife Tamp down these corners so it slides in. Let me actually cut this back open now that I got it started, just so I can see how much room I got to go. All right. Actually, that's why it stopped. It's there. All right. So 
tape that up again. I mean, there's a hundred different ways you can ship every package, but there is a, always a safe, safest option, and there's always a cheapest option. Are those always the same? Those are usually not the same. They're cheapest and safest, but a happy medium is, is what you're aiming for. 25, 8, 6, six pounds, two ounces, which unfortunately still would have been cheaper to send um, FedEx home delivery, um, but still much cheaper than what they actually paid for shipping. Uh, the issue I was running into is I didn't have a good box for it. I, you know, you don't have every single shape and size. And I didn't want to have to resize a very large box and, you know, making one dimension of a box smaller is easy, but when you have to resize multiple um, dimensions, it, you know, your box loses a lot of its integrity. Um, so that, those boxes work the best. So for me, the extra dollar twenty to send that priority instead of FedEx, which is still way less than it was going to cost originally. They were paid forty one seventy one. Yeah, they paid forty one seventy one to send it FedEx, and that's going to cost me fifteen forty to send it priority. So all in all, that's a win all around. But this one. This is where insanity comes in. Uh, uh, Farberware electric open hearth broiler. These, if they have the rotisserie parts, are a great seller. Even if not, they're pretty good. It's just, it's, a, it's excessive to ship. And again, if you have to clean it, don't do it. That's, don't either sell it dirty, say this is dirty, I don't feel like cleaning it, so the price is low, or it's gonna take you a long time to clean it because it's a grill. But, this is going to Anchorage, Alaska. They paid $38.24 for it. Um, it was on sale. And they paid $138.65 in shipping to get it to Alaska. I've only had two, two shipments ever that went to Alaska. One was, I think, Nome, and then this one to Anchorage. And that's why, because shipping is, is insane. That's why I don't do free shipping. Because as soon as somebody from Alaska, or Hawaii, or California buys something big, I've lost all the profit. It's all gone. So I don't do free shipping on almost anything unless it's first class or it's going to go in a uh, priority flat rate because then it's a flat rate. One thirty-eight sixty-five. I think I'll be able to save some money. But the other one, while I'm thinking of it, was one of the, my, the coolest things I've ever sold. One of my favorite finds of all time. Antique poker set. I got it up. I got a Salvation Army for five bucks because oh, it's poker chips, whatever. But they were they were clay, and they had uh, what they call a good luck swastika. So that's something to look out for. Something you have to be very specific of how you list it, because if you know your history at all, the swastika has some very negative connotations. But predating Nazi Germany, the swastika was a Native American um, symbol used, and actually just not Native American, but used in other cultures, predating Nazi Germany, they took that symbol, made it theirs, and then forever it is tarnished. Um, so if you do find stuff with swastika, you can't sell it if it's, if it's Nazi Germany stuff. You can't sell it. That's, don't even try, don't try to sell it on anything, because you will get flagged on every platform. There are collectors, I don't know why, it seems a little ooh, like if you're if, they, if I walk to somebody's house and that's what they collect, I'm probably not eating dinner there. If it predates that, and that's that's a lot of things, artwork, poker chips specifically, poker chips. There is a high high value in that, and they paid I want to say they paid three hundred bucks for the poker set, and then it was again it was like a hundred and something dollars to ship it. They ended up getting some back because I was able to pack it a little smaller than I expected. But it was, it was definitely one of my favorite finds because it was the research of it. I was like, oh, wow, what is it, you know? 
And then I got to find a whole history of stuff that I did not know. So I, I really enjoy the research when it's, it comes down to antique pieces. Now that I've been jibber jabbing, I almost forgot what I was looking for. Ah, here we go. But ding, ding, ding. Um, I think I can grab this. But yes, these these are uh, these are a pretty good seller. They do better in the winter. Like everyone else, the things you find will greatly depend on the areas you live, the demographic of where you live. But these I find a lot. I'll find I I'll find one every. I think it'd be a safe estimate to say I find one every three months. So, but I don't buy every one I see. That one was clean. I didn't have to wash it at all. It was good to go. Um, but if it has all the pieces, there's an upright bar and a rotisserie with a motor. If you have all that, you're looking at closer to a hundred bucks for it. And then I lucked out and found on Marketplace last year or last winter. Um, oh, it would be last year. It's January. Um, last year, I found a new in box from the 80s maybe late 70s, but I think the 80s. New in box. It still had like a couple pieces of tape with wrapping paper on it. So it was probably a wedding gift. Got thrown in a in a garage and never seen again until some a picker actually, a friend of mine I went to high school with. But yeah, he, he sold it to me. I put it online. I set the price high. Because if I wanted to put it on Amazon, I was looking at like 600 bucks, but I don't do Amazon. I might branch out if I need to, but as of now... I like the way I get to eBay. It's it's more my style. I don't have to deal with a, a mediator beyond what eBay does. Uh, but I ended up getting like 250 for it. I It sat long enough. It was taking up a lot of space. It was getting close to Christmas and nobody had bought it yet. And that was my, I was banking on somebody getting it for Christmas. And somebody gave me a decent offer and I said, okay, I paid 50 bucks for it, 280, I think, something like that. That's good for me. Now this, great news, Christmas ornament. Uh, Krebs glass, Lausha, Snow White, and Seven Dwarfs. Anytime a Christmas ornament sells after Christmas, I will jump for joy. Uh, Thirty-three ninety-nine for this year. Cute little uh, set of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs ornaments. There's a lot of money in Christmas ornaments, but you have to have a keen eye. That was easy. It's got a name on it. It's in the original box it came in. It clearly, when it says Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, I can see it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. But when you get into the shiny bright or um, or even the, the Krebs like this, but they're in, they're just bulbs. How do I know that this 40-year-old box of bulbs hasn't had a bulb switch back and forth? And I've looked and like, how do you tell the difference and stuff? And that is, that's, that's auction area for me because because that's when auctions make sense when you can't really pinpoint a price but you know there's probably a value there leave that up to the buyer go okay here's what i have here's what i think it is that's up to you you want to buy it you put your money out there and then last one today this came in early early this morning so i'm still going to call it a weekend sale um pampered chef rock crock Pamper Chef Rock Crock. And that's back into that territory of I'm no longer doing glassware unless the value is there. $69.99 for the Pamper Chef Rock Crock that I got buried in here about as far as you can go. But for $70, bucks, i will keep digging. Now, can I grab this one hand? That's, that's, the, that's the iffy part. Let me take the lid off. I would hate to lose it at this point. So, yeah, so it's a heavy, heavy, heavy um, rock crock. This is probably going FedEx if I had to guess, or UPS. Um, Pampered Chef. And that is a great flip. I paid five bucks for that, I think. Um, it was in a thrift haul video about four or five videos ago. Um, don't want to lose the lid. Um, but, yeah, that's that's a good flip. Two weeks on the shelf, turn five bucks into 70 bucks. I'll take that every time. So I'm gonna get this packed up. Oh, before I go, the my tip, my trick, my number one way you get your worst weekend 
to turn into your worst weekend of, I think, like I said, it was a $70 sales weekend into a $800 sales weekend is your list. What I did between that weekend and this weekend is I listed around 83 items, which some people say 83 items. I do that every week, but I don't. That's, that's not how my business is set up. I have a I have a family. I got three kids. I have a girlfriend that has a job whose t- the time at she works does not exactly meet up with the time I need to work. So I have to, you know, my job allows me to finagle my schedule around quite a bit. But what you do is you list. You list as much as you can. You list as often as you can. And then those listings turn into sales. Some of these are items that have been sitting around for months. Some of these are items I, I listed, you know, fairly recently. All the pans and the Tupperware and the phones. But whenever you increase your listings, it increases traffic to your site, traffic to your store, which increases sales. It's it's pretty simple. So whenever I hear somebody saying their, their sales are low or, or, you know, the seasonal sales are low, that kind of thing, you're either selling the wrong stuff or you're not listing enough. That's, that's all there is to it. Now, if you find that you're listing all the time and you're still not getting any sales, then you need to look at what you're listing. So you're either really butchering your listings, which it's hard to do. You take, I mean, cameras nowadays, if you're taking bad pictures still, I don't know. I don't know. I can't fix that for you, but yeah, it's, it's to, to not ramble on anymore. The system's easy. You list more, you sell more. If you're listing more and not selling more, you're listing bad products. Stop listing what you're listing and list something else. I list a very products. I, I, I'm mostly thrift hauls, garage sales. So what I list is anything with value. I'm not, I'm not picky. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I only sell games. I, I'm only in the electronics market. I'm only in the cell phones market. That's narrowing your market share to a specific area. Why? Branch out. If your sales are slow, spend a half a day researching, figure out some new stuff to sell and add that to what you sell. And if you do that all the time, a couple months later, a couple years later, all of a sudden, your market share is large. And so listings go up, profits go up, and then the smiles go up. Hey, all right, have a good one. I'm gonna pack this up. All right, so I got one more item to pack up. Had a few sales come in um, as I was packing, but I'll deal with those tomorrow or even the next day. Um, tomorrow's gonna be a heavy listing day, so I, I might send out some words tomorrow, might not. But I figured I'd wrap up my thoughts before I uh, catch some dinner and then pack up this last one. Uh, post office closed today, so I had as much free time as I wanted to to pack up the orders, which was good, because that was a hefty packing day. Um, so yeah, final thoughts. Um, when you're shipping something odd shaped or fairly heavy, I think a good idea would be to pre-box it. It's not something I do often, but and when I'm doing when I'm listing, I'm in the mode, you know, you don't want to stop and, and do something else. But I think really, especially with like those fireplace tool sets, I would have known that I could have shipped it out for twenty dollars instead of her having the I think it was a her, um, he or she or whoever paying $40 shipping. So I'm losing out on sales by my shipping having to be so extreme by the dimensions being off. And I knew that I was going to break them down. So I guess I should have just done that at the time. And I might go back. I got three more of them. I might go back, take those apart and repack them um, if I have some spare time, which when does that ever happen? But I think that's going to be all for today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Let me know. Drop a comment if you have a question or just some advice to give me on how to do my daily um, goings on, how to run my business. I'm always up for advice. Uh, Hit the bell icon if you want to know when my videos drop, which I'm shooting for three days a week. I've been trying to get Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but you know, life happens. So whether or not that'll stay consistent, who knows, but that'll be all for me today. Hope I see you next time. Be good to each other.